The Sega CD is often remembered as little more than a failure in the eyes of history. But it's a history often written by those that didn't own or support the platform when it was actually on the market. Despite its reputation, the add-on for the Sega Genesis had four years of support and over 200 games released for it worldwide, many of which were some of the better 16-bit versions you could play. And that's what this episode is all about. These are the games you could play elsewhere, but I feel were better overall on the old Sega CD here. A lot of the advantages have to do with additional music and sound effects, of course. I mean, it was a CD-based add-on after all. But sometimes the Sega CD would get extra levels, animations, and cinemas that added to the overall experience. I've picked out 10 games for you. Let's get started. I always felt that Demolition Man was one of the better acclaim released movie license games. It looked and played decent for a run-and-gun platformer, and the animation was top-notch. The Sega CD version was pretty much the exact same game except for one major point, its excellent Q-Sound CD soundtrack. It elevates the entire presentation across the board. The action sequences sound better, so they feel better while you play them. Of course, no CD movie license would be complete without full motion video cinemas here and there, and you get those too for a slightly more authentic connection to its source material. Much of the game follows the movie pretty closely and includes numerous scenes and plot points. The gameplay takes place across two separate engines. One is a side-scrolling action game, while the other is played from an overhead perspective with lots of exploration. Fans of the Genesis original should fall right in line with this version and appreciate the extras. For those that haven't given it a try yet, I recommend this version as your gateway into the universe. It was developed by a company called Alexandria and was only released in North America. All of you Genesis and Mega Drive fans will easily recognize Echo the Dolphin here. Developed by Nova Trade and released in 1993, the Sega CD version adds the expected cinemas to the mix, but also some incredibly atmospheric music driven by Q sound. Pop on some headphones and prepare to be blown away by how well it fits the surroundings and punctuates that lonely feeling often associated with the game's maze-like exploration. Echo always was a unique game in terms of gameplay. It gave you the ability to attack, but was much more of a cerebral experience than you'd expect. It was slow, methodical even, and it was easy to get lost and confused in its enigmatic stage layout. It does have a pretty forgiving password system for each stage, and trial and error does reward you with one hell of a creepy sci-fi story that is dark and quite a bit more disturbing than you would have guessed. The great new music just adds to that, and some of it is so relaxing you can listen to it on its own. While the Genesis never saw a port of Final Fight, the Sega CD got one in 1993. It's fairly easy to compare this to the Super Nintendo version and say that its two-player co-op and presence of all three original playable characters make it the 16-bit console version of choice. But what about the more modern versions of this game that emulate the arcade 100%? Surely they are the ones to play today, right? Nope, the Sega CD version is still the one to play. Aside from being a great looking and playing version of the arcade, it also happens to have some incredible music. This stuff has been remixed from the arcade tracks, so it sounds familiar, but has been improved considerably across the board. There is also a Time Attack survival mode specific to this version that adds some great replayability that you won't find in any emulated version of the arcade. You also get a fully voiced opening cinema, and its limited continues assure a challenge to all who press the start button. 
it doesn't have as many enemies on screen at once as the arcade version, and there is a reduction in color, but I'll trade those for its killer soundtrack and extra modes anytime. In 1994, late in the life of the Sega CD, Mickey Mania made its debut. Already a hit on the Genesis, this expanded version added a great new soundtrack, tons of new voice samples during gameplay, modified boss encounters, as well as new enemies. The Genesis version was already better than the Super Nintendo edition in numerous ways, and the Sega CD version just adds to the list. It was developed by Traveler's Tales, and is an incredibly good looking and animated game. Large characters and lots of parallax scrolling highlight its AAA presentation. The gameplay is tried and true platforming with a touch of run and gun action. The Sega CD version was ported to the PlayStation a while later, but some of the stages are more frustrating due to some design changes, mainly by adding more things on screen that can damage you. This makes the Sega CD version the most balanced and well-designed version among all the available releases, and I highly recommend you give it a try. When it comes to the original NBA Jam games, there's the Sega CD version and then there's everything else. The main upgrade you get here over the Genesis release is the addition of much better sound and voice effects, great in-game music, and a different roster of players. The Super Nintendo version of the original has some decent sound effects, but lacks any in-game music at all. You do take on the slight irritants of load times with the Sega CD version, but they aren't god-awful or anything. It could be argued that later releases of NBA Jam like Tournament Edition and Hang Time blow away the original here, but the Sega CD still plays a decent game of NBA Jam. It's the best of the 16-bit releases by a mile. Mortal Kombat was unbelievably popular on the Sega Genesis at its release in 1993. It took seven additional months, but Mortal Kombat also showed up on the Sega CD. And well, it's a better game all the way around. First, no bullshit blood code needed in this one. You get all the gore right from the beginning, including the vicious fatalities. That squirrely Genesis music has been replaced with CD quality tracks of the arcade original, and the voices have been restored that were lost. There are cool little full motion video intros for each character, and the opening cinema is actually the original commercial played to the popular techno track that was used in the first movie. Other bonuses include a gore-laden pit stage, increased animations for each fighter, and endings that are much truer to the arcade version. It's an all-around solid upgrade in many areas, though it doesn't come without its negatives. Since this is a CD game, you get some terrible loading happening during the battle with the final boss, Shang Tsung. The gameplay comes to a grinding halt each time he morphs, which really messes with the flow of the gameplay. Outside of that though, Mortal Kombat for the Sega CD is very much the best 16-bit console port of this game. You guys already know I do not enjoy Batman Returns for the Sega Genesis, so I don't need to gripe about it too much here. Luckily, the folks at Malibu Interactive decided to add a second game to the Sega CD version. 
It's a vehicle-based combat game that makes heavy use of the Sega CD's sprite and background scaling abilities. Not only that, but they recorded a killer soundtrack for it as well. This engine really showed what was capable on the system in the right hands, and it serves as a reminder of just how underutilized the tech that powered the Sega CD actually was. It's a great game to have in your collection, even if you hated the Genesis original. One of the biggest surprises on the Sega CD was Earthworm Gem Special Edition. You get an entirely new level, the expansions of levels that were already there, new power-ups like a homing missile, new voice samples, new music, new endings, and even a new password system for replaying your favorite stages. The end result was the best version of this game by a mile, and a fine example of how a cartridge game could be easily expanded upon by the CD format. It wasn't always about full motion video cinemas or fancy scaling effects. Sometimes you just took what the game already did extremely well and simply added more of it. Earthworm Jim was a good game before it made its way to the Sega CD, so all the developers had to do was make sure it got more of a good thing. Yippee! 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 The Terminator wasn't a bad game on the Genesis when it was released, but the Sega CD version is an entirely different beast altogether. Now faster, with better animation, better pacing, and an absolutely killer soundtrack by Tommy Tellerico, it was exactly what I wanted in a run-and-gun shooter based in this universe. I love how it takes place across the future and the past, even showing you the facility where the Terminator goes back in time. The stage variety is excellent, and it's amazing just how well the music suits each and every stage. The Sega CD rarely got this kind of treatment, where a company made a completely new product from the ground up when there was already one in existence, but Virgin Games made sure that their CD game would stand out. Start to finish, it's a game that never lets up on the action, and even though the full motion video cinema sucked to high heaven, the rest of the game is an absolute must play. Road Avenger was one of those games that simply couldn't have been done on other systems at the time, unless it had a CD add-on. The original Data East Arcade version had been on Laserdisc, and its bleeding-edge animation and music were a sight to behold. The Sega CD version saw a number of changes when Wolf Team did the port. The video runs in a smaller window and with less colors, but they completely redid the sound effects and music, and it's here where the game excels. The opening cinematics have rarely been as important to a game as they are here. It sets the tone, the atmosphere, and builds a world where revenge is not only expected, but deserved. An evil road gang has robbed you of the love of your life, and now you will rob them of their very lives. Gameplay is entirely full motion video driven, with frequent quick time events to respond to. Sometimes it's as simple as turning left or right, other times it's hitting the breaker turbo to avoid disaster. You've never wanted to avenge a digital character so badly in your entire life, and the music is entirely responsible for that. Some of you may wonder why I would make a list like this. I mean, why not just emulate Mortal Kombat, NBA Jam, and Final Fight on MAME and be done with it? The thing is, not all of us experience these games the same way, and not all of us want a version that isn't on the hardware we hold most dear. 
There are Sega CD fans out there that just want to play some good games on the platform, and even pick up some physical copies to add to their collections. We all are attracted to various things in the hobby, and it doesn't always boil down to simply being about the technical side of things being superior. Even when it's a port, a home game often feels different, looks different, plays different, and can even have content the original version never had. Most of these games had music and sound effects well above other home versions of the time, and a few of them had exclusive content that had never appeared on any other platform. I was a big fan of the Sega CD when it came out, and I still very much have a soft spot for it, which drives me to play it quite often. We all have our favorites like that, and these 10 games are definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of Sega's often maligned CD add-on. I'm SegaLordX, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.